Okay, uh, welcome everybody. It's uh, Niantic's User Group. It's 29th of May, uh, 2017. Myself and John are here. Hello. Um, as usual, as we always say, any uh, any questions, anything, now's the time. Oh, they've got questions coming in off uh, Alejandro already. Uh, any questions and so on and so forth, um, any ideas, uh, updates required, please you know, raise your hand, type in a question, we'll open the mic, and let's discuss it and see what updates we can do. Okay, uh, speaking of updates, um, at the last uh, webinar, which was two weeks ago, I was given a status update on um, the command bars. Now that still has some more time. Um, I done quite a bit of work, I was away last week, quite a bit of work on it today and it's still giving me the runaround but <laughs> I hope I'm on the right track and it's really to do with the resizing if anyone can remember just let me quickly tell you what what it is it was um it's it was really to do with a thing that um Arnold mentioned quite a while ago uh, but the the fix I'm trying to do will basically work make it work better, not just for command bars, it's for any of the products that go on the application frame. So the new approach will be for both, well, will be for command bars and shortcut bar and task panel. And I'm trying to think of the others what go on the frame. Mm, quite possibly. So, and it's, it's to do with basically clarion resizing doesn't tell you, <laughs> we're being event driven. It, 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 it's not guaranteed the, the events will land in the order that you want them to be. So I'm taking a different approach, detecting the actual sizing changes that I need when I, when when they've occurred and acting accordingly on them. I'm doing my own particular uh, generating, still carrying events, but in the order that they should be. So that's, where, that's the update that is coming out for the command bars, but it's in progress. Uh, I have to say one thing, John. Oh, yes, Toggle's just reminded me to do the user group meeting. That's very good. Yeah, that's good. Do you ever, does anyone, uh, anyone use Toggle, by the way? No. Uh -uh. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll quickly show that in a second if anyone wants. Um, so basically, that's the update what is, it's currently being work, worked on. And it will, as soon as it's available, update to all the main products because it's uh, in the core library will be released. So, um, so watch this space. Um, there is one other thing though. We, at the last user group, we did some changes to the report control for John regarding uh, the fix in uh, inline, basically to emulate, a, uh, an emu uh, emulate an edit in place button. Um, that is done, it's done, tested, uh, and so on. So we could actually release that. I uh, will get it out, I'll get it released um, tomorrow. Okay, I didn't get time before um, before I went over to uh, I went away last week, uh, but yeah, it's done now. Tried and tested, quite happy with it. So I'll get that release out. I forget the version number, something like three point six, something like that. Um, that's that's it. the The thing I was qu going to quickly show is um, it's, a, it's a utility uh, called Toggle, and I use it for tracking time. So I don't know quickly show it you. It's nothing to do with cold jock, it's nothing to do with Niantic. It's, sorry, no, yeah, it's nothing, to, it's just a product I use, but um, it's quite a good when I'm working on different projects. Uh, so I've just started the user group here and it's got the clock going, but it's got a web interface, you've got a mobile interface if you want to track your time, uh, you, you know, you're out and about, but still working on a particular task and so on. Um, and it's so easy to use. So if I just click on that, I can contract it, you can see what I've been working on and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, basically, uh, you just keep adding to it. And the one I use, it's free of charge as well. I think it's free for something like up to 10 developers. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's really, really. And it's, uh, if I wanted to change that, uh, or change this one, I could you know, put that into, uh, give it to Niantis or different things and all color coded and you've got a reporting interface in like say a, a web interface where it uh, analyzes all your time for you and you can analyze it on any particular date range you ever want i can um uh, give a quick friday uh, webinar on that john 
of you know oh, yeah. time management and um, now I'm doing more and more not just on this uh, quoting on jobs and so on and so forth it really does come in handy to make sure that I'm actually doing things right you know you think oh that one would take me half an hour and then you look at your time and you're taking two hours on it when you need to be better next time yeah that'd be great that'd be good yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm a convert on it, uh, but I, I can go through the different interfaces. But yeah, that's what came up a minute ago in case anyone was wondering what, what toggle was. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay, I've got a couple of questions. I've got a hand up, and um, and then John's got a, a question as well. So uh, without further ado, um, got Bill. Just open Bill's. Uh, mic up, just one second. Hi, Bill. Hey, uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank Andy. I was, uh, I kind of had my head up my butt this morning when I emailed you, and uh, we, we we had settled that thing back in February, apparently. And when uh, when you're gone two months, you kind of lose track of things. <laughs> That's no problem. I mean. I, I couldn't. I, I thought um, you 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 were updated and all you know all up to date and so on and so forth. Um, so when you said uh, you know can you can you let me know? I thought I'm sure he's done this. If not just sent it. You. I thought you'd actually paid and uh, and everything was uh, box tick so to speak. Uh, but but yes, uh, you came back to us. So yeah, uh, but I couldn't remember as well. So it's that's a pair of us. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but my my question that I've got for you today is. Have you, uh, are, are you doing anything with uh, any web-based, uh, either H5 or uh, or uh, NetTalk uh, web apps? I use them, yeah. Um, more the NetTalk than the web apps, to be fair. But, uh, sorry, uh, than the H5. But um, it's only because I haven't updated my... Uh, Clarion. I know there was just been a, a brand new update out, but if you have a look, I'm still on a quite an older one, a, a, a one two two double one. So it's quite an older version, uh, but it was stable for the applications I was doing, so I didn't want to upset it. Now I believe it's more than stable nowadays as well, but um, uh, yeah, I've not I've not really delved into uh, much of the H5 until you know until I need to. But yeah, on the web app um, on the Net talk. I, I do some of that. I use that myself for a couple of our applications. Why? Well, what you thinking? Okay. What are you thinking? Interfacing the current stuff, or? Well, yeah, I'm. I'm looking at kind of going somewhere in that direction for a few portions of my application, and uh, I just was trying to get some feel for, you know, what whether I should stick with the or start start with the net talk or 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 really dive into the h5 and uh mm, it's going to be hard for me to make a comparison because like i said i've not gone too much into the h5 i'd look at some of the videos and knock together an example when it first came out when when, when you know with the uh, with the clarion 10 but um and on heart i couldn't really give a, a an informed decision between the two because i've, I've not got experience with one of them the net talk stuff was nice and easy I think visually, from what I've seen, unless you put a lot of work into the net talk, I think the H5 visually might be uh, more appealing. But it depends on, you know, maybe you could do that with uh, net talk. Some of my net talk stuff, the uh, from the web server point of view, visually is is a bit boring. But it does exactly what I need um, for the application. So you know, it was a, a round hole, round peg, and everyone was happy. Yeah, I, I just. I just didn't know if you had anything that, that rather any of the Noyandis products were linking into either one. No, the, the intention is a good question because it was, the intention was before Clarion 10 and before H5, the intention was to do a set of um, templates which use a lot of um, jQuery. I think, yeah, jQuery. <laughs> um, to basically patch between how your desktop application would look and how uh, the web app would look. Obviously, there'd be a data layer on that for the ones which are heavily data intensive, like a calendar and so on. So there would uh, there'd have to be that. And I, I mentioned it, actually, I mentioned it to Bruce at the last DevCon regarding doing some kind of uh, uh, collaboration and so on. But things get, you know, 
pushed up the queue, so to speak, and so on and so forth. So there's nothing out of the box at the moment. Yes, it's, it's a logical step, and it's a, it is a, a step I'm going to have to tick at some point. But I'll probably start with some of the more static controls, like, um, like say, you know, the navigation ones, a task panel, a command bar. Uh, you could then take it to a next, um, the next level and say maybe the report control. So instead of uh, report control on your desktop application, having the uh, list, the, uh, the the list box all sortable and, and you know and doing some of the functionality of the code jock within uh, within a web environment. There are a set of tools. Um, you have a, a quick look. Just let me open it on the other window. See, I, I chose. Again, a long time ago, I chose a set of tools um, for this uh, this um, very task. We just take a login on this. So, if you're on the, if you're within the, um, ah, that was a bad idea of me. A load of serial numbers there. Um, yeah, let me just bring that down a little. Okay. So if you're within the Niantis um, web page, and you can sort your own columns and re you know, oh, I think I've turned it off. Yeah, you can you can sort, but you can also rearrange and so on. Then I, I did choose a, a set of um, plugin products for them, but to be fair, they were quite expensive, and I know you can accomplish the same, if not you know better, uh, with uh, the uh, jQuery uh, controls, which are of course free. So, um, so that will be the more logical route for me to take. But whichever route I take, it will be uh, a tick in the box to be able to co cover both NetTalk and H5 because I'd be silly to just go for one or the other. Okay. Well, that that was that was more or less my question. Uh... Yeah. So yes, there are plans. I, the the controls which I purchased, which I won't ever use on my site now, <laughs> um, which is fine. They. Um, you know, it would be pointless me going down that path, but uh, but no, the, but the uh, the others will. But I'll, I will go with a more easier control. I'll go with some, like say, a navigation, uh, be it um, a task panel or a command bar, something like that to start with, and then progress it to something like a list, and then finally working up to the uh, the calendar. By which time, two way comms would need to be uh, you know working. Uh, quite strongly there because dragging events around on the calendar in a web interface and then reflecting it in the desktop application at the same time, yeah, it's going to take a bit of work. Yeah, I guess, it, yeah, I guess it would uh, doing that. I, I was, I guess I was thinking more just of, uh, the appearance, you know, you, you, you've got, uh, your tools make everything look nice and, uh, well, let me find. I mean, well, we, we digress. Although you know, that's the whole point of the, uh, the the youth group. Let me quickly find you the controls um, which 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 I use. Um, that's the one. Just one second to make sure I've got the right one here. Now, I think it's these ones. Yeah, DHTMLX, they're the ones. So this was the library, which I had originally intended. And you can see from the, oops, sorry, from the um, the products that they actually do a suite. And the suite's very, very similar to the CodeJock suite. So you can actually build your application. You can see here on, this, on, this, on their demo, you've got docking pane, report control, um, command bars, chart pro, uh, I know they've got property grids, tree control, so you, you know, ribbon. So everything you've got within the code jock, you've got in this suite. Hence why I thought it was a logical choice to look at this. But I just I believe now that jQuery's got most of the uh, most of the stuff as well. But these do have the calendar. If I remember rightly, there is a scheduler. Yeah. And jQuery's a Clarion product. Maybe it's not. Am I thinking of jQuery the right one? No, it's um, the it's um, the JavaScript um, tools. Which are basically these are JavaScript. 
So you can see here, if I pick this, and I can pick it around, and this is, you know, a web interface. So you, that's very, very similar to the code jock. So I, as long as I can get, you know, I know I know I can generate this, and I can generate it from most of the command uh, from the templates prompts. Because the idea, oh, sorry, we digress, but um, uh, the idea I, I had was you've already, let's say, uh, we'll take three examples. So you've got your, your easy one, the command bar. So you've got a command bar, you've defined how you want it to look across the top with the options and the pop-ups and so on and so forth. And then basically there'd be an extension template to plug it in to generate this. So this would generate uh, a chunk of code into whichever kind of thing. So it would be your web page being served by, and at the time it was only NetTalk. Like I say, it'd have to be H5 as well for, uh, for non-NetTalk users. But then that would um, feed straight into that. So your end page would look, give you the power of, of, of that kind of UI, but generated from the same settings you'd have for your desktop application. That's the idea. That's the approach I still want to take. Because the last thing any of us want to do is then have to start regenerating a whole new set of uh, templates and, uh, and, and and template options, more more so, um, to be able to get a similar type UI on our web than, than, we, than we do for our desktop app. But I think getting the both of them looking very similar gives consistency. Yeah, that's real nice. Thank you. Okay. Well, this was one of the. Uh, oh, so that's the grid. Yeah, this is the one. So you've got to search, which now we have a search as well across the top. I don't know if you've seen the latest and so on. Um, so, yeah. But take a look, take a look at these. Um, but they, they, take a look. And I'm sure. John, can you remember if it's yeah. J, jQuery? I'm sure it's jQuery. It's just, yeah. And of course, these. Let's have a look at the. Um, I don't want to download and install. I could just do with some examples, actually. Yeah, so think things like this. That's the type of thing. I think you'd have to look at all the different widgets, uh, uh, Bill. And uh, uh, but as long as I can see that he's got an equivalent of calendar and so on and so forth, then I'll probably go with this because um, it'll be the easier and the cheaper option for everybody using it. I forget what the uh, what the price of this is. If I remember rightly, I think it was a. It was a few. It was a few dollars last time I purchased it. <coughs> hmm. Anyway, I, I, I can't, can't see what the uh, what the price is unless anybody can see. No, I don't see it there either. No. Let's go for the suite and see if we've got a. Better not have made it free. I paid a fortune. <laughs> Well, we know it's not free. <laughs> so, but uh, but yeah, but this, I'm going to say there's an example of just one of theirs. So they do actually do some nice tools, hence, you know, why I, why I chose them in the first place. And you can see your application, which your desktop could look very similar to that using the products, using our products. You could then get the, use the same settings and get the same, type of UI but for a, a web app and uh, yeah it could work, could work quite nice ah Roberto's there and he's just said something about the price request and he's going ah oh, Roberto sorry I didn't see your hand so okay so uh, that's that uh, does that answer it Bill yeah oh yeah yeah and that's that we, we've I didn't want to get us off topic that far, so no, we're okay. It's, well, it's a, it's a user group webinar, so there's no such thing as off topic because you're driving it. <laughs> so that's fine. 
Okay, okay. Well, um, as soon as I've got anything, or if you just wonder where I'm up to and stuff, just drop us a quick email or jump, jump on Skype and just give us a shout. Will do. Okay, cheers. Okay, so we've got some other questions. Uh, Alejandro, let's open the mic. Where are we? Um, have, we, have I solved the issue? Hello, Andy. The, hi, how are you doing? Very well. Hello, John. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, have I solved yes. the issue with the property grid? Uh, that was from a couple of weeks ago, was it not? And the answer is no, because I was away last week. Um, I only really I got back at nine o'clock last night, so and I spent today uh, doing obviously some catch up, and then on the uh, command bar, the resize and so on. Uh, the only thing which was completed, uh, I say the only, was like I say the um, the update to the report control. So now I'm happy to um, as soon as I've got this the sizing done on the um, the command bar. Prior to getting the release out, I can take a quick look at the property grid because, if I remember rightly, it was a it was a self-contained issue, wasn't it? Can you just remind us? Mm -hmm. But what what uh, what was it again? Okay. I don't What's, think what? you what you said. Oh, oh yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> it went right by him. Okay, the the property grid issue. Can you remind me what it was, please? Yes. When you put a uh, double quote. That's Do you right. remember that? Yeah. And we had to try and that's, that's, um, we had to try them uh, to either double double them out or quote them out, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. I will look at that this week. Okay. ¿Cómo, Roberto? Si la intención era de cortar las comillas para que no aparecieran. No, que cuando pones doble comilla te corta y te desaparece del property grid. Yeah, it says when you put double quotes that it cuts it and it disappears from the property grid. Of course, yeah, uh, I do remember. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah that, I mean, so with the fix is to actually go in there before and and cut them, take the quote double quotes out so that it doesn't show them or something like that, right? Or is there another way to actually put some kind of Unicode? Um, formatting in it I'm which gonna probably have to would do be it. better I, oh. I very much doubt um, I, well I don't think Clammy is going to uh, bail us out on that I think it'll be I'll just have to check what's coming in and quote it out accordingly myself mm -hmm. yeah so the string theory could help you out there you know to convert the we could yeah but I don't want the products reliant on any other products I want them to just be self-contained so of course if you they all, they all play well together but you know you sh you if you want to buy more buy more but he shouldn't really rely on I don't like this I don't like the approach and it's not a pop at anybody I just don't like the approach of I want to buy one product but I need X Y and Z first as sooner no right you know, if I want a calendar, so, I buy the calendar. If I want could, a command bar, I buy build, a command bar. Uh, could, could we build maybe like a, a dictionary converter or a character converter? I'll do uh, it a bit like I do in the like um, in the common class where you set a property. And remember, this goes across all the products. Sometimes you might set a property and you might, at the start of it, put the point in. And sometimes you might not. And, of course, the class detects it and corrects it accordingly and it'll be that type of approach so if I have a look at what's coming in and it's got certain uh, characters um, like the double or the single quote I'll just have mm -hmm. to double them out so that it appears how you want them to appear right right so that sure so that we get the quote otherwise if you just take it out I mean it's just not going to appear Oh no, I won't take uh, that because that'd be like somebody's name, like O'Connell, and all of a sudden I was right, you know, right. <laughs> I've just taken out the apostrophe, and they are mm -hmm. literally just O'Connell. No, no, it's got to, you know, if it goes in looking like that, it's got to come out looking like that. <laughs> right, uh, right, right. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking when you said you want to cut them out. I'm like, mm, well. <laughs> oh no, no, the, that uh, someone's someone's data might not. Uh, might not, they might not like me for that. No, no, it, I'll, I'll just take it uh, in the common class and, and put it, um, if I need to from a speed point of view, although I don't think it'd be a speed issue, I'd put it right. in some or, kind of... Uh, or would there be some way to create a converter, a text converter, so that it will grab those quotes 
and may, or whatever character is also out of uh, a reach of it and convert them to the you know that that I'm and something or other you know you got an and and a number or something like that well i'm just trying to think actually you know in the common class don't we already have a few things um just let me jump down sorry to hang you but we have actually got some there's some calc um no there's the add token see some of these go across obviously these comments so they go across all the products um oh. I thought there was some uh, there's a find replace in there. I think you need to well I, but I think you need to f do something else like a I don't know like a type of URL encoding. Uh, well that's what I'm thinking but it'll be basically so inside of I thought I had something it's not not called simply like quote or something like that is it? No. Anyway, it'll be that type of approach. So when right. you go to set the property, um, mm -hmm. if you want to turn it on, like I said, the, putting anything like that, it might might put a, a speed um, decrease. Right. There. Just like the tokens. If you don't use, the, the uh, you've got this global token queue, which I don't know if anybody actually uses. Well, you could create it just a function, right? And you could add the function on it. That's exactly what oh. Yeah, that's the Instead of putting just the text? Yep. You could, you know, put a function like encode or encode or and then it really you know, is. NYS encode or whatever, and uh, so it'll code it for you. Yeah, well, it'll be whatever cl your class name is because all the all the classes are derived from common. So it'd be if you if you've called your class command bar, it'd be command bar dot, um, or it, actually if you're using it in the template, you could use yourself dot and it'd pick it up. Right, right, precisely. So. So, so yeah, I think I'll probably go um, basically down down that route, um, but do it in uh, expand special characters. What's that one? There you go. Hmm. <laughs> we got it. like a double quote there or something. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll put it through some testing, but Alejandro, um, I would uh, take a look at that. We already have. Remember, this is common, so every class has it. Uh, you've got to um, expand special characters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me have a quick but it only does it on double, double quotes, right? So you'd need to add more. Oh, oh yeah, exactly. Ability there. So, yeah. But um, but one of his uh, one of his tests was the double quote, so you know mm -hmm. that might just help. Uh, right. So if that's used anywhere. Uh, obviously, I've got the yeah. See, add combo option. And it will double out any because it's put it in double quotes for you. So it, mine might be a simple case. The property grid fix might be a simple case of that. I'll I'll, I'll um mm -hmm. I will try it for you and uh, uh, report back. That's that's uh, mm -hmm. I might set myself a bit away. I will try. <laughs> Maybe give it a better name, something like that, or add it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, fix dodgy characters. Replace special character. <laughs> I don't know. Call it encode or whatever. You know. Well, like... I think to be fair, that was internal. Obviously, um, now it looks mm -hmm. like it's going to see the light. Although it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to see the light of day. It should. It might be just a, a case of where I'm setting it in the property grid. Just like this is doing a, a combo caption, and you pass in an ID and the. The, the option that you want to add and it'll take care of any of the, the characters it might be that I just need to do that in the property grid and I'm not doing obviously add the extra characters like you say but um, yeah it might just be mm -hmm. you you wouldn't have to worry about the name of it it will just it's take your data that, that class right expand special characters mm. yeah si ves Ale puedes usar esa clase porque está en los common class so if we look at your property good, not your property good, my property good, but you, um, it was, um, what was the method we were using? Add item. Yeah, so we've got the name there. It could be a very simple case. In fact, should we try it? Rather than just talk about it? Sure. Why not? It's a user group, right? It is. I say, <laughs> there's no, no such thing as an incorrect um, question or topic. Well, Ish. <laughs> First of all, we'll just uh, 
we uh, basically repeat the issue with a double. Oh, this machine was slow on the last one, on the last webinar, but it's been fine all day. Um, so I'm wondering if the go to meeting slowing it down. Could be. Yeah. I've noticed things like that doing it too. Okay, so here's one. We can see that we've got a double quote straight at the start. So two, three, three, f two, three, three, five. And obviously, we're not getting that address, getting far from it. So, let's take a quick look at that. So I'm, I'm really encouraged, or trying to encourage you to use that JavaScript stuff that you were showing. For the like I say, when the, the United oh, website yeah. you use it, and it is the uh, intention, but I, I don't yeah. uh, if, if you want to start, the same function. you know, start with a spreadsheet or something, you know, and hey. something that we don't have. Alejandro, there's a fix. <laughs> now, I will get that out tomorrow for you. Sorry, I jump about Excellent. there. It's up. So basically, you can see that I'm just padding out. Now, I will track. If there's any other characters we need to, the usuals are. I think it does single and double, does it not? Well, it's, but I'm sure there's other characters that are also. Yeah. In question. But you could just change the class. Yeah. So well, just change a common class, and then it affects all the products in one go. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, it will check. We have another question, if you can. Uh, yep. I do want to. Can I? Just one second. Just let me put a quick. Yes. Note into the property grid so that I don't forget okay. more, uh, basically for my sanity. But um, I'll get this out uh, tomorrow to you. Okay, twenty ninth. Section two items slash captions with reserved characters. Obviously, check it through. That's far from a release at the moment. I'll, uh, I'll check it through with other characters, uh, the usual culprit, so to speak, and um, I'll check other points because you also got categories as well, which might suffer the same issue. Mm -hmm. Yep, add it on category too. Oh, I never renamed that, and I went over. Sorry about this, guys. I don't do it now, I'll forget. Talk about making a history in template code, man. <laughs> well, it's just a lot of us a lot of us are just plain lazy to even make history. Changes? No, you have to go in there and do them in template code. Well, it's because you're using the templates <laughs> there and then. So, you know, why have to go elsewhere to go and look up stuff? You're here, you're working on it, you might as well have it at your fingertips. There you go. 
Okay. Uh, you say you had another one? What? A question. Sorry, did you, did you say you had another quick question? I did. Yes. Can I show my screen? You sh oh, yeah. Please. So you should have got a you should have got a prompt. Yes. Let me know when is my screen. Okay. Yes. Got that. Okay. Look. Oh, do you know? Can you check? Oh yeah. I did something when I make a right click, this come back the value of the, the row, the column, and the value of the cell. Okay? Okay. So when I do in the child, right click, I, I got the, or I get the row ID, the column name, but the value doesn't come back. Is that definitely the correct okay. row ID? What? Is that the correct row ID? Is that correct the number of the row? I think so. Maybe we should view the row ID on screen, and that way you'll know if you can add the, the column. OK. How can I identify? Let me show you my code. If is it help? <laughs> Wait. I don't know if you want to see anything else. No, it should be fine. Hang on a second. Tag. What? Oh, so I was just reading. Yeah, you're using the, the, the column tag for... Yes. Because in the tag, I have seen the name of the column. But you should have the column ID. Um, no, 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 no. Just uh, scroll, scroll to the left, please. Where? Yep, that's okay. Right, so we have param row uh, mm -hmm. for the row ID, and you message that out. That's fine. The column ID. That's mm -hmm. fine. The value, and you would pass it the row and the column to be to get that. That's fine. Now you're getting the roll cell property. Caption, fine. But you wouldn't use uh, tag. What are you trying to achieve by using the, the tag? What I get? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that that's correct. Yes, I have the parameter column, the uh, row ID, column, column ID. ID, yes, and the value is the caption, okay, here. It's not the caption. What? Oh, right. If I am I doing in the parent, that's work perfectly. Okay, just show me the code again, please. Yes. 
Okay, so we've got Valor there, then you're putting out the caption, then you're putting out the tag. Get roll sell property. I, 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 didn't, I, I don't think a roll sell actually has a tag. A column does. Just looking for you now. Just one second. What? Uh, okay. well, yeah. to um Sorry about this, just looking um, uh, here as far as fast as I can. So put control. Okay, so there is a tag. Uh, let's have a look at what I store in it. Because I know I store it on the... Ah, oh, I store the column ID thinking about it. Yes, I do. Okay. Right. Look at me. Let me look at the code again then. Caption equals, and you're getting the caption. All right, can you just run that again for me, please? So we've got a caption. So we value and caption. Roberto. Uh, run, uh, run, please. ¿Qué pasa? Ah, uh, run. Que lo corras. Yes. What's oh. you... Ah, sorry. Yes, yes, sorry. Okay, so say... right click on... Oh. We have the app open, so it didn't compile. Yes. Happens to the best I of us, right? <laughs> Always. <laughs> I changed, uh, I put a caption equals to see the, the name in the message. Okay. Be happy, my machine is a little it's slower than your machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, and... On row two, on number two. Number two, sorry. Yes. Okay. Caption two, column Auden. Agreed. Uh, yep. Okay. Are you okay on that, please? Have you got any other columns there? That's just, that's right. Yep. That's okay. Yep. That's okay. Press okay. And then the next mm -hmm. row. Is the column blank also? It's a different column. Oh. Look at the column. Código yeah. M Banco. You press OK on that. Yes. Yep, so that's a different column. Cody. Yes, I put the... Yes, a different column because this is another table. But that's why you're getting a blank. Okay, so if you're OK on that, and go to the one above... Mm -hmm. 
Que le presiones OK en ese y que te vayas al de arriba. Sorry, wait. Okay, that's a different uh, column. What 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 we are getting? So that is called that's row ID forty nine. Column name is Auden. Yes. So you've got a caption and a column. Mm -hmm. Now, what what are you clicking on the next one? It can't be the same column. You must be clicking on a different column. Yeah, that's a different column. Es una columna distinta a esa. Yes, because I, I create in the child another name for this column. This is not a, this is not good. No. No, how let me look oh, how this you... is bad. Uh, I put a different name of this column in the child I would keep it the same uh, same column and then it can get the uh, internally if it had the same column name it would have it in its own queue which means it could work out the object the ID and calculate it from there que deberías de mantener la misma nombre de columna pero como es otra tabla que el objeto de todos mm -hmm. modos lo va a encontrar algo así dijo no le entendí mm -hmm. que significaba pero <laughs> And how, how I can uh, get the caption or the value from the object? Because the object, I can take the object from the row uh, ID. Yep. That's right? That, yep, you can get the object of the row, which, which, but you've got, you have the, um, pe okay, just press okay on that for me, please. Que presión es okay? Now, could you right click um, on the third column on the second row? So, Mercado, okay, to the right. No. Nope. Pero que le hagas clic a la derecha, en la segunda columna, en Mercado Pago. Sorry. Okay. Mercado Pago. Mercado Pago. The column name is Banco. And the column name is Banco. Okay. Okay. And now on the exactly. same, same column on the next row. La siguiente. Una línea abajo. Y una. Ahí me. Mm. Emission date is the name of the column in the child. Uh, okay. Oh. Oof, oof, oof. Um, how would you add the column names? ¿Y cómo agregaste los hijos? For the children. Para los hijos. Yes, yes. Um, are you data bind? Mm -hmm. I know. Add yes. item. So you SQL query and then you add item. Where's the that's the setting of the data? Where'd you add the column? Right. Ah, sorry. I uh, make a first a queue. Let me show you. Here I add in in a queue I add the column the column name let me see here column name so let me come back Column name, row, row, parent, row ID. Ah, sorry, before I, uh, mm. Wait. 
vitamin three. No. Wait. See, we're adding the dummy. Is how do you add the items to the the set values, the set row cell values? Uh, ah, the set value. You're, you're, are you creating a default group structure? And when you do the add row, oh no, okay. Have you seen? You add the item, you've got that. So you add a child, uh, add a, you've got the parent, you add the a child yeah. row, that's fine, yeah. Yes. Then so I add, uh, yeah, no problem. Yes, and here, in the tag, I use the name of the column. Is that in a loop, the add item? Yes, this is a loop. Yeah, no. Uh, you, from the, that won't work when you're doing the, that. that from, that's fine for, for loading the data as you've got there. But imagine you've got a spreadsheet. And when you first load it, you have row A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay? Yes. And then when you put your first line of data in it, you say set a1 to a value, B1 to a value, C1 to a value. That's fine for the first parent row. But then when you come to your next one, you're not doing it via A or B or C. You're just saying the very first item, set it to this. The second item, set it to this. That's why you're getting your data in there. That's why it works. But when you do get row cell item value, you're trying to get it on an incorrect name. Um, mm -hmm. it, it won't do it. You, you, you're giving it a completely false name. So it's going to look for a column called, you're saying get row cell with a column of Z. You've only got to A to F. You, you've not got a column Z. So it won't find the column. So it won't find the index of the column. So it won't find the value. So that's why that, that, that won't so, work. Let, let me know if I understand. I have to put here the name of the column or no well if you go back to your example okay go back go back to your your program sorry um your cl clarion yes yep okay uh, the, uh, the in the code or the examples no no, no. in your, where the uh, the message ah okay then uh, row Right. Yes. Okay. So let's uh, let's scroll down. So where we have right at the end. So it says scroll, scroll to the end of that line. The message. Ah, the message. Yes. Sorry. Okay, now let's co um, copy that. This line? Yep. The whole line? Oh, sorry, no. Uh, from, from, yep, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, before column. Bit, bit, bit more. There. <laughs> <Te pasaste. laughs> no, but um, down to just after capture there. Okay, let's get that copy. Yes, and paste uh, before the last parentheses. Before the message? Uh, no, no, no. To the end of the message. Yes. And put an, a new message. Uh, no, we can put it on the end of the other one. We can add add to the previous one. Okay, let's do it that way. Yep. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so we want value equals, not column equals, value equals. Value. Yep. Here. Just okay. Once I can get. Um, at the start, go to the start of the line. We want message, and then it said we want it to be value. Value Aquí equal. Value al principio de la línea, de la segunda línea. Antes de column. That's it. Antes. Yes. Ah, eso. Okay. So get row cell value. En vez de property value. Yes. Okay. And the first parameter is good, the second parameter is good, and you don't need the third parameter. Okay. okay. Now what that will do is it will get you the value of the cell that you've right clicked on. Okay. Uh, if you've got if you've got this cell selection turned on, let's let's just check. Might be okay. I have a row select in set in one. Okay. Value two, value nothing, empty. Can you turn on the template? Can you turn row selection on? Hmm, actually. Que prendas el row selection. No, no, it's okay. Don't need to because ah, the ah. second one's working. Ah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the, the child records that aren't working. Okay. Maybe. I'm yes. thinking he's not getting the right, the correct row uh, value. See, is, it, add otra is it adding row to the de la columna? Agregaste el, el número de, de fila? In the in the queue interno. Yes, sí, sí. ¿Nos muestras el código? Yes. Yeah, where where we add the child? Do they add the into the internal queue? Yeah, what that? I want him to do is to add the the row, the column for the name. That's possible, right? Show me the add row, the add child row. Please. El child row. ¿Dónde tenías? Creo que estaba en el load records, ¿no? Ok, ya, yeah, the... Here is the row ID. Oh, it's right there. It's the row queue level. Parent row level plus one. That's what it's doing, right? For the... Yeah, but... That's why it has... I don't know. Row child object. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Row ID. Child row child level. Yep. Yeah, that should be okay. Okay. Let's quickly um, let's quickly jump back to your example. Sorry? Uh, can we go, oh, sorry. Can we go back to Clarion? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Right now, yes. Sorry, can oh. you repeat me? 
Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, can we go back to the cl uh, Clarion, please? Your yes. application and to the message. Yes. Okay. And can we have um, uh, on the end? Add add to the end. Al final. Que le agregues. Of the message. No. Yes. Can we add to the end of the message? Que le agregues al final yes. del mensaje. Yes. Okay. And let's put uh, row object equals. Yes. And then self dot get row obj. Open parentheses param row ID. Let's just let's just make sure it can get that row. Mm -hmm. Looks something. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Looks something before. If I change this uh, value, for example, this changes. Okay. If I read again, sorry. This is some stuff, some issue of mine. You see here. The value was changed. I think it comes down to it's the column. It's still the column which is uh, which is throwing it. You can get to the row, so it is a column. So mm -hmm. I think it's when you're adding, um, you're adding the data. Uh, I wouldn't go changing the uh, the column ID. Do you need to change the column mm -hmm. ID for the child row? Yes, you need to yes, change it. Yeah, because he's importing it with uh, SQL table. That's a different table. Right. Um, and when you make the update SQL statement, you need the, the name of the column. Okay, going to have to give that some thought then, because it's not the norm, to be fair. If you've got a column which is A, B, C, and then you go uh morphing it afterwards um you're gonna get you're gonna get some issues like this mm -hmm. okay. preguntarle si yo no puedo traer el valor en base al object al row object is there any way to get the value in basis of the row object? Of the row object, you are, you've got the row object. I don't get you. Uh -huh. I don't. I don't understand. Yes, but he wants to get the value of uh, selected row from the column oh, from you, the row object. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. You would go to the 
Um, now let me get this. Try the it row cell value or something like that and give it the name of the object? No, no. Um, like for, for example, here. Okay, you could. What we do? If we just get rid of the um, get row, if, instead of get row cell value, let's just do. Um, crikey! Could it, roll, could it be the caption? Maybe instead of a. No, no, no. It's the caption or the value is, is irrelevant. Okay. No, no. Um, you would have to get the. Um, let's define a C string twenty, for in the data section, in the right click. In the data, you define as one uh -huh. C string. The twenty. Okay, and let's do uh, p row obj equals oh yep um, equals um, self dot get row object oh get, get row obj param row id. Okay, we have to arriba en lo último. Yes. Okay, now uh, we can do a message. O sea, a ti lo que te interesa más que nada es agarrar el valor, ¿no? De la columna. Sí, sí. Okay. Digo, el valor de la celda. De la celda. Yep. Okay. Um, self dot get property. This is very low down stuff. Anyway, you're gonna scare you're gonna scare people with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, open parentheses. Uh, P row obj. Uh, ampersand. Uh, uh, single quote. Oh, yep, yep. Dot. Now. Uh, record what do we have to do that Get this this record no, no, oh no 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 not yet i'm just working the uh, just working it out what field do, what what field do you want el número de de celda que es en orden it's el dos, el tres, el cuatro. It's a number, right, Andy? Uh, well, it's, it's, the, it's, it's ID. Do you just want the, do you just want the row ID? The, the, the ID de la columna. The, the cell ID. Okay. Column ID or row ID? No. What What do you want when they when you do right click? Do you want to see the row ID? No, the, he wants sorry, the cell the, value. The, the individual value of the cell. You're not going to get it here because you don't know what cell they are clicking on because of the column ID. That's my point. You're going to get a false column ID back. So you can't work out the index of the column because you're going to get a, a wrong column ID back. Sí. Es que está recibiendo. But he got the right ID before. No, he didn't. He got no, a he blank. Right. Yeah, he only yeah, got it on, right. on the thing. On the top, yeah. On the, on the parent, he got it. Yeah. So I could show you here how to get it via a number, but it's right. He'd worse. have to kind of add them up and figure out how many cells and yeah, or how many right. rows he actually has on each one of the. Yeah, mm, not, not, quite a bit of numbering. Not not pretty, not pretty. Yeah, but I guess it's a workaround. Mira, lo que vas a tener que hacer es buscarlo por número, o sea, ya no por el nombre. Pero para que pase eso, tendrías que saber cuántas columnas tienes y cuántas filas tienes en cada uno de los agrupaciones que tienes de los child records de, de ese parent. Entonces, lo But, puedes seleccionar por número. Can I use the index? 
Well, I'll show you now. Yes, we can do that. Okay. Okay, okay, cool. I'm going to get that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just do okay. from that. Mm -hmm. Oh, where have you gone? Did he go away? I think we lost him. No. To who? To me? Yes, we can't. We, yeah. Your screen's gone. Your screen. Ah, sorry. It's now? Not yet. There we go. We're back. Okay. So, um, next line. Yes. And go to the end. Okay. Uh, oh, no. No, we want that. No, no, no. We, we go back to the message. Yes. I hear a lot of Q. Okay. Um, uh, get rid of the uh, delete, 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 or, or backspace. And back, uh, get rid of record. Okay, try item. Open parentheses. And two. No, no. Try, try one. Uh, no, no, no parentheses. Uh, no, yes. Sorry, no, no quote. Yes, that's that. A single quote. Okay, just try that, please. Yep, it's not pretty, but it'll kind of do it the Zamo way. <laughs> it wouldn't. Hmm. Ah, I suppose Can you I could get the point. The, to, you could the from values there. of the child uh, filter in some way. Sorry? If can I add the value of the, the child in the filter? In the filter. These values yeah. here. The values oh. of the second. That's going to be really oh. hard, I think. Okay, so now you're going to get start to get in the, the object. So that is the raw object mm -hmm. of the cell. Um, so now you could try item two or item three or item four. But not just the mm -hmm. item. You want item dot value, okay? So yes. let's try that. Now, what you could do, because you've got a different parameter ID coming through, a uh, column ID uh, being passed to you, you, you've got your own queue of those columns, does he? Yeah, you could just grab it by the grab name it. of the queue. Yeah, grab it by the name it and use the, the pointer name. as the index. Or maybe the pointer plus one because you had a, you had a, a hidden... Uh, Mm -hmm. oh, no, no, uh, Alejandro, on the end of item one, if you can just close the parentheses and put dot value, please. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. After keep, keep that, keep that. No. No. no uh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. There. Keep dot, little, dot value. Does he need to take the parentheses out? No. 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 That's good. Okay. But it should be, it, it's zero based, right? So it should be like. It will be, yeah, yeah. I recuerda que es zero based, Ale. Entonces la primera columna es zero, la segunda es uno, y así. ¿Qué le pongo, zero o uno? Por eso lo que te digo, o sea, son zero base. O sea, la primera columna es zero. Entonces ahí te va a agarrar la segunda ah. columna, porque le pusiste okay. uno.
excellent. Okay. Now, because you could work out the index, which is the uh, inside of the parentheses, zero based, you could use that from the your column uh, in your own queue. So the, co the param column ID would right. have uh, the new column name. Then you could go and do a get on your queue, use a mm -hmm. pointer, and th use a pointer to get to the uh, the individual cell. And get a what? Yeah. I think, from that, I think that they have the, the the ID, the column. Let me see here in load queue. Well, you just want the pointer. If you've added them in the in the same order, just the pointer will give you the index number. Here is C, no, column name. Yes, I have to add a number of no. the column. No, no, just a pointer. Hmm? Just pointer, pointer, and the name of the queue. Que nada más un apuntador y el nombre del queue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will add. Okay. But this is that I want. This is I need. Oh, sorry. Uh, message. But we'll move on to something a bit yes. easier in a minute, like the theory of relativity or something. Thank you very much, Andy. No problem. You you did uh, just to check and revert, or were you just? Uh, you know, to use the, the pointer, so just before the message there, if he did do a... Um, uh, ¿Que regreses a tu código y antes yeah. de ese mensaje? A, a get item on his queue, then he would actually get his... Uh, I think he que would le des get index. item en tu queue. O sea, lo que quiere es que le agarres un get item del queue para que sepas el nombre de la columna. Entonces ya lo buscas por nombre de columna en vez del item 1. Porque así ya lo puedes encontrar. Mm -hmm. Eh, porque tú tienes un queue y ese queue ya tiene los nombres de las columnas. Exacto. ¿Cierto? Yes, column name equals to... Uh, param column name, uh, column ID, yep. Ajá, exacto, y le haces un get, entonces ya vas a poder tener el nombre de tu columna. Exacto. Es lo que te estaba diciendo. Uh -huh. Excelente. I know what's your point. And then it, they replace the one. Perfect. Perfect. With um, uh, it, it an, mm, it's an, it's an, number. Yeah. Yeah. It goes to. Mm, Do you have a height item or need a hash? You want a pointer? Yes, it's uh, you want pointer and the name of the queue. Pointer. Yes. Something like this, I think. Mm. Item number, yep. But if you do, uh, no, wait, but, yes, but instead, if you have where you have Q pointer, if you say equals, what? Okay, Are you? there, uh, go next. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, where you have Q colon pointer, just say pointer. Here pointer or yeah. here? Pointer. No, no, there. No, abajo. Q dos puntos pointer. Ah, sorry. Q. Yes. No, la de abajo. No, no, no. No, no. Uh, delete that. In the line below, where it says Q, item no, number is equal Q two points pointer. Arriba, in the seven 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 six. Here. <laughs> no. <laughs> en vez de en la línea siete 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 nueve. Al final. No veo cuál es la. Esa que tiene sí, esa I, mera. Yeah. Okay. There. Final, no. Yeah. It's a Q pointer. Ahí. Pointer, oh, yeah. Yes. Pointer. 
Uh, just, just the word pointer. Ponle el nombre pointer. Escríbele. No. Después del igual. <risa> no. no. Déjale Q. Ponle Q dos puntos. Q. Ahí yeah. ponle pointer. Pointer. Escríbele pointer. Ok. Eso. Open parentheses. Abrir paréntesis. The name of your Q. Y el nombre de tu Q. Ah, ok. Eh, se llama Q o no okay. se llama. Yes, no problem. Yes? Yes. And just this? Uh, but, but, but it would be the name of your Q, but yes. And that, uh, well, it should be, that should be item number hash equals. Ah, ok. I understand what you mean. Directly, a pointer, for example, hash. Yep, equals that. I put the pointer in the there yes yes excellent i know what you mean okay pointer excellent and they will uh, come back the uh, the number of the position of the Q, yes and that will give you your number for there excellent so i have i, I don't have to uh, modify my queue exactly Excellent. No, but you, you can't delete your queue. You have to keep your queue also. I know. Modify to add the pointer field. Mm -hmm. I have not to modify to add the pointer field because using this, I get the pointer. Excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent. Hmm? <laughs> okay, okay. We, uh, Thank we, you very much. No problem. No problem. We got there. <laughs> okay. I'm going to bring this back, and I think we've got another question. Andy? Yeah, oh, yes, sorry, Roberto, yes, fire away. Did, did you get the command bar to erase the menu bar, or yep. not yet? Yep, yep. I can show you that. I'll quickly show you that on mine. One second. All right. Um, I'm actually trying to find myself. I can't find me. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> we, see, we, we see you. Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> we can hear you. Uh, now, now, actually, I'm not sure what shape my command bars is in because, um, yeah, I've, ignore the big uh, area. Uh, this is my testing earlier. <laughs> with all the with all the resizing issue, so ignore that. In fact. Let's not sh oh no, I can't because it's a class. Just one second. Let's see if I can quickly find the um, where I did the, one of the changes. Won't be a second. I've got so much debug on this version. Uh, it's, it really is quite messy. But yes, um, it was a one-line change, which I knew it would be. <laughs> so, uh, and it was basically Clarion puts it back, even though I've told you know, even though you've destroyed it and and not done right. something. Basically, I just uh, when I know that an MDI is opening, I go and destroy it again. Well, not right. quite destroy. You hide, and then I think you I can't remember you change your parentage or you set the ID, but basically. Yeah, there's mine open, but no menu bar across the top. That's what you have to, was it not? Yes. Yeah. So yes, that uh, that, that that was the first fix. That was the easy fix. It's the, re the resizing which is giving me the runaround. Because that should there resize, and that's the issue because of the events. So if I pull that, well, that was one issue. Yeah. And then the other one was that the menu would appear on, at blank yeah. box at the top. Yeah, but that's that's gone. Yeah, that was uh, it's weak, but well, you can see it's, it's hidden. Ignore the uh, working progress there. 
Oh, but I had it on with the ribbon bar. Is that with the ribbon bar? Oh, it, it wouldn't matter. It's just the fact that an MDI is opening. Uh, you Technically, you'd have it even with the uh, the task panel and the uh, shortcut bar. They would suffer the same issue because it's not But it me. didn't happen to me as often. It happened more on the ribbon bar than it did on others. Well, now it's, in the, uh, it's the, the extra place to trap the clary and putting it back in place um, is, uh, is in the common cloth. So all, all of them fixed at the same time. All right. So when do, can we expect to have that one? I, as soon as I've got this resizing done, then you'll get that at the same time. All right. Yeah. So, okie dokie. Um, so we've got another question. Lots of questions today. This is good. Um, David, 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 can I open your mic? Are you, are you still here? <laughs> Hi, David. Did you see the calendar one too? Yes, still here. I'll let David on. Oh, sorry, Berto. Um Yes, uh, David. Yes, fire away, please. Yes, sorry, sorry, I was here. <laughs> I just uh, sort of stayed quiet while Roberto answered there. Um, yes, I've got a few pre-purchase questions. I've seen a few people using your templates, Andy, and I'm at the point where I'm wanting to decide on a, a UI interface for some programs that I'm creating. Okay. And look, looking at uh, whether I can do certain things and whether it will support certain things. So uh, just, if you just give me a couple of minutes just to quickly answer th these questions and tell me kind of do what I want to do. And uh, that's that's it. Look, looking at what you've been doing today, I'm, I'm quite confident that, yes, it, it looks as though it is. Um, <laughs> After we've just done that, I thought we were scared you yeah. off. <laughs> well, a bit when I first started looking at it, but then when I realised what you were trying to do, I re realised how, how much power there was still underneath the hood in this. And, uh, probably I wouldn't run into any problems that I couldn't sort of solve in one way or another because you solved a quite complicated problem there. Yeah, um, um, I mean, the templates will we'll, we'll fire in and see, but that's the whole point of the user groups, as we say. Yeah. We'll, we'll fire into someone, you know, but um, the, 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 the code job controls uh, change all the time. The templates try and keep up, but you never cover yeah. them. We're not even covering in some some places you're only covering maybe maybe fifty percent. But at any one point you've got uh, some core uh, methods to get to the raw values. So you can so one hundred percent you can say you can do anything anything the control's capable of you can do because you can get to all the raw stuff. So even if they add something in the future and I've not, I don't do a template update immediately or I don't cover that to start with, you can still do it by getting to all the raw stuff. You shouldn't have to get right. your hands dirty to that level, uh, but there's always the exception to the rule, uh, like uh, Alejandro a minute ago wanting to uh, add child roles and, and manipulate the internal queues. Okay, it was a, a bit of a workaround we did, but you can still do that. Uh, yeah. so yeah. So fire away. Okay. Well, the well, first one was: is there some sort of wizard that uh, does a browse and update template? I, I noticed at one point there you were showing a, a browse customers and an update customers, and it was uh, the report control, which I think you call it, and then going on to um, a form with a property grid on. Okay. Yeah. Am let I right me... in what I understood there? Yeah. Let me fire away. Let me just open up. Um... Uh, today's folder and uh, we'll bring some examples in to show you okay, okay so report control first nice and easy yeah report control uh, is a it's a, it's a crap name <laughs> it's a terrible name but it's yes, um, yes, I, I understand I've, I've heard you mention this before I, I've sat in on a couple of web webinars and watched a few things it, it's just it's hard to understand quite the capabilities and well the, going to cover. the naming of that is basically we the code job release the calendar pro we release the calendar pro chart pro chart pro they called it report control so of course we follow it uh, just so you know that yeah, yeah if you're buying that control you need that template and then they go hand in yes. hand but um but it doesn't help sometimes <laughs> so yeah. you've got the report control they're, they're powerful there's to uh, the, the, the three four ways actually you can get data into it um you can manually add so this is a manually loaded report control and right. basically uh, you're calling a, a function called add row 
you can give it a predefined group to say I want to add a row and I know my structure is going to be this type of structure so I can just define a group and pass it a group and it does marry them one to one so field okay. four will get that field five will get that it that's probably your low level um so, so, so basically what you're saying is it, it's like me creating a queue and then passing each individual row of the queue into the report control yeah yeah you, uh, you okay. yeah that's that the next one perfect uh, you just set me up there um <laughs> the next one then would be if you've got a queue uh, you, you, if yes. it's a manually loaded list on the screen, you can use a list enhancer. So you could just say, "Oh, right, I've got a, I've got a Clarion list on the screen." No, it's not an ABC browser, or a legacy browser. It's just a list. You can use a list enhancer. Yes. Have we got one of those? Have we got? Uh, da, 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 da. No. Um, under advanced. No. Okay, but it's just exactly the same because what you can do is there's a Clarion standard Clarion list. Yes. And here's the same browse, um, but the report control enhancer template has been added to the browse. And basically, it takes the Clarion browse and paints it accordingly. So the Clarion browse uh, in that mode there is hidden. And the report control takes on all of the characteristics. So it takes on your column ID, the column definitions, and the pictures, uh, the order. And so on and so forth so you don't actually do any programming there you just add the extension right okay yes so, perfect so you can do that to a page loaded browse there are some little yes. um little i'm not going to be size on there all oh, right okay there are a couple of little foibles to mention because i'd like to be fair yes. if it's file loaded then there's the vertical and that is the code drop vertical bar and of course yes. you see it as so if it's page loaded the reason I say that is, if I just make that a little smaller, I want Clarion to kick in, resizing. You can see the scrolls look a tiny bit different, not much. And that's because that's the Kojok scroll, but that is actually your Clarion browse. Because right. you need that because you can hover over it and control it with the scroll. Or you can click in the fun positions. So, and of course, Kojok will have no idea about any of that. So, what it does is, it puts itself literally just to the side and, and then paints the rest of it with the cold jock. I've got you, yes. So there's a little trick. You know, I like to be. Yeah. So that's that's how the page load is done. Of course, if it's a Clarion list, which is enhanced, then it's automatically not file loaded, memory loaded, because that's what a Clarion list is. It's just a queue of data. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so you've got that. With any of these, you have... Uh, obviously you can double click and you get your normal basically your keystrokes are still fed through so your locators should be I don't know what keys we've got on here but uh, your locators should be um, passed through and so on and so forth oh, I press D then by the way um, yeah. Yeah. so basically yeah that's your uh, page loaded or file loaded or queue loaded and that's your enhancer so to show yeah. you that one you would have your standard clarion list and you can see that was the um, that was the screen and if we look at the extensions there's nothing on it and if I was to well let's just turn that into it let's just put it into a um, health enhance uh, report control and I'll just add the uh, browse enhance And I'm, I'll just go with the defaults because it, it's, that's good enough. Where about your race, David? <laughs> At the moment in Cyprus, but I, I was a little bit north of you. I used to be County Durham. All right. I noticed a northeast twang. Yes. So. yes. Yeah, uh, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of between the UK and Cyprus at the moment, backwards and forwards a lot. Um, but at the moment, out in Cyprus. Oh, you jammy bugger. Oh, you, you're, not missing, <laughs> you're not missing much today, I can guarantee. It's a terrible yeah. today. All right. 
Right, so um, it's the first time I compiled this, that's why I'm getting a, a full compile. But um, yeah. all we've done on there, take our standard Clarion list and put that on. Uh, well, we're just waiting for it. You will get your, your regular um, callbacks. Double clicking obviously feeds in. Your Clarion yeah. embed points are your normal take new selection and record selected. So all your, all your code, which, which is where it used to be, carries on being where it should be, if you know what I mean. But then I you've got, exactly, yes. but you've got also you've got all the ones of the code jock. Should you want to intercept before or after and, and do extra things? Yes, yes, yes. I understand all that. So we're back to that, and now the Clarion one's gone, and uh, that's who port control. And the yeah. other way, uh, which we covered on a couple of uh, a few uh, previous webinars, uh, which you might have seen, is the data bound where you can bind it directly to an ADO source and take um, the Clarion dictionary out of the equation. Okay, yes. Yes. So, yes. That's the report control. You can do loads with it. Um, I don't have to think. You, you've got the example. You've probably seen them, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I've seen them. That's, that's, but what you've just shown me there, but uh, I'm more, I was more concerned about um, being able to get rid of all my Clarion list boxes, so they had like one consistent interface throughout the whole application, mm. rather than sort of jumping between effectively what, what looked like Clarion and then what looked like code jock stuff. Yeah. So yeah. yes, yes, you, you just clarify that side of things for me there. Yeah, you, I would um, use that. The golden rule on the report control is every role must come back to a unique ID. So if your primary key happens to be a, an auto numbered ID, record ID, brilliant. If not, yes, then I you can override the. Yeah. yeah, oh, you're fine then. I was just going to say, if not, then you have, you cannot on the template, like I just accepted the defaults, but on there, you could have just gone to um, uh, override that and say which field. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's that. And then you can feed it into um, property grid. Let's go into a property grid. Here's one I prepared earlier. If you wanted your update forms to look like a property grid, yes, that's what I was thinking. That uh, once you started on one one user interface to try and remain consistent throughout everything. Of course. So let's just open this again. I have the Clarion examples, the um, master examples in Clarion six actually <laughs> to keep back with compatibility. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why it's updated. What version of Clarion are you on? Ten. Oh, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Um, so let's just compile that up. This is the old example application, actually. So we could actually enhance one of the things here, because um, well, let's let's just do it, and I'll show you. Yeah. As soon as you open the webinar, your EXEs take a long time to compile then? Yeah, I've, like I said, I've been on um, command bar yeah. on and off most of the day. And as soon as I open go to webinar, that slowed down. And we had the same last time, if you remember. Yes. So, that's weird. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a property grid. And you've got all the different things that you can have with it. So you can say that that is, must be one of these. And I think you've got radios and just like you have a, You've got one extra one like you could have a tri-state, so you store them in a equivalent yeah. of a, a needle. I've actually got one question on that. Oh, on yeah. one of the images you've got on your site, and also on something I looked at on the code jock site, there was a, a slider. Do you have a slider on here? One of the numeric options there, so we can see we want just a regular number, 11. Yes. A number with a slider, so you can type in 11, or you can... Oi. Okay, perfect. Want. That's exactly what I'm looking for, yes. Or you can have it as a spin. Yeah. So you can type in and adjust accordingly. But that's just one of the attributes. When you say, I want that, you can say, I want it with a, you know, uh, it's a numeric, but I want a slider on there within a particular range. Right, got you. Yes. Um, perfect. Now, of course, you would normally go and build that. Um, you can build it oh, manually, just like in all the controls. 
before you disappear from that screen where you've got the toolbar color there that, that's returning rgb numbers yep can, there. Can, it re, can it return the four numeric type rgb numbers rgb a i think is it that ones that have transparency i don't know mm, i don't know I'd have to uh, look in the code job for that. Let's have a quick look on here. Property grid, and it's one of there, and it's a color object, because you've got obviously different things. So the color object. Um, the, all the, these will be based upon the, the core item object, but then obviously extra facilities depending on, on, on the thing. Um, yeah. Now, what would it be? Maybe under the flags. Has that it expand the combo? No. I don't know. Code Jock are probably be the best ones to yeah, yeah. Uh, to ask on that if you want the truth. Edit the style. Yeah. Item color, standard color, extended color. Oh, so you can control how what kind of color dialog comes up. I don't know if that'll help you. Right. It might do. I mean, I ha obviously, I haven't got that in standard Clarion anyhow. Um, it's just something I would I would like to have. And uh, just when I saw what you were doing there, it uh, made me wonder whether whether it would uh, do that or not. You could you could you, you could try that with the uh, the the extended dialog rather than the uh, the regular. Be it worth a try. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. But uh, and I think that's just on. So you, you, you get the idea. Um, mm -hmm. But now, normally, you build that manually. So you would add the categories, as you can see here, yes. and the items and the value and so on. Now, you can do right. it via a queue. A lot of our controls, yes. a lot of the templates now, you can um, put your data into a queue and yes. say just mimic that queue. So basically, you populate it, and it will paint what's in the queue. Can you change the queue, and it will change accordingly. Have we got an example of that? Yeah, queue base there. So I'll just change the contents of a queue, and the property grid change it accordingly. Okay, yes. So it saves, it saves a lot of programming. But we did go one step further. Now, this was a manually done update form. So the, again, this is your normal Clarion browser. So you, you would have the report control feeding into it. Yes. Um, and you want your form like so. Now, that's, that's what I was wondering. Can that be done automatically from the templates, or this is something you have to do manually if you want it like this? Up until recently, and uh, maybe it's on the line here now, um, David was the one who requested it. So uh, you've got David to thank for it. Let's go to the update form. Browse, browse, browse. So currently, this, this is, like I say, this is the old example. So there it is. And you can see that it would have been painted data source in the template with categories, with items. So a bit laborious, if you want the truth. Yes. So we'll get rid of all them. Quickly compile it to what's the old one. Nothing up my sleeve, but we'll quickly show you that it's empty again. Yes. Uh, and then we'll load it from the dictionary. So now I do want to do a screen enhancer where you can say, I want to do a screen or a portion of a screen. And I started to, but it just couldn't make the cut. So there are plans to finish that off, and the, the, the changes are probably only weeks away. But, you know, they, 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 we have got a couple of pressing things first just, just before yes. that. Um, yes. But the idea is you could say enhance the window, or well, that just you'd pass it a zero, or enhance such and such a group, and it'll just turn that group into a property grid, or enhance a sheet, and it'll turn the whole sheet into a property grid, that type of thing. And obviously, any contents. Oh, I understand. That. Yes, yes. I like to yes. do enhancers because we've all done the work in our applications already. So the last thing you want to do is go and do them again. Yeah. Anyway, there's our. It's empty. Yeah. So I just have to go into here, change the data source. So we can see we've got variable, we've got a list control. Oh, you can marry it to a list. So as you open down the list, you can have the data mm -hmm. change uh, queue. We'll do um, file slash variable. I think it's that one. Was it that one? Uh, 
Oh yeah, must have been that one. Um, I thought it was different from that. Oh yes, I still ask you for category grid because you might want to actually. Because in your dictionary, you wouldn't actually. Yeah, if you if you were painting a screen, chances are you put them in groups. You know, so you'll have like name and address, you know, contact details, that type of thing. So I still say these right, in yeah. your category. So I'll say name, that type of thing, or ID. Um, well, ID, not part of a collection, but we'll just say from our uh, file. I want it to be. I'll oh, just do that. I want all the fields in the file. Or right. I could just say field, and I just want to give, that's the ID, and I don't want any buttons on there. Um, and I'll have another category of the rest just to, to demonstrate the power, so um, all. For oh. you, yes. And in this time, instead of saying um, it's a file, a field, I'll say it's a file, and I want all of them except the ID. Um, so now you can see that we've got basically a couple of things going into it. Should have two categories, one with the ID, and normally I've probably made that you know, read only or something like that. Although yeah. it, all the settings come from your dictionary. So you, you maintain yeah. your own normal dictionary and it picks up as much as you can from the dictionary. So if you've got that as read only and write aligned, you get it read only, write aligned, that type of thing. Yes. So now back to our update. And yeah, basically there's our, our fields. Perfect, yes. Very powerful. So. Well, I'd say that was it, David Patterson who uh, think for that. Uh, thank for that because he, he also didn't want to go through that and, uh, and and do them all manually, which uh, let's face it, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, no, no. So. Yeah, and it makes it all very, very consistent. Then yes, perfect. So it picks up as much information out, you know, uh, the thing. I, I think my example when I was deving it, I tried it with um, must be in list. So of course you'd have something along the lines of just to, without doing it now if you if you think uh, must be in list if you had a radio they would be married yeah. otherwise so must be in list with I think you'd drop down or something oh, oh, yeah like so um, yeah. I'm trying to think of them dates and times were covered you know dates come up as dates but times come up as well and uh, prop, uh, Kojok don't actually offer a time control so I had to rework one and um, and change it via an entry mask to uh, make it the time control. Okay. Yeah. So. And multi-string. So if you've got a text entry, then you can have that. Oh. And to you have to because of it serving, you have to use Control Enter to do the carriage return. That's a cold jock restriction. Um, right. Um, I did have one other little question on property grid. Just one second. Um, what was it? Side, uh... Oh yeah, there was a, when I was looking on the cold jock side through the property grid, they had a browse button that displays a file selection dialog and allows you to import a picture file Yep, it's here, um, that one. Yeah. When you do that, does it actually put a small little... Yeah, the icon. Yes. What, what about if it's a, a, a full-size JPEG or something like that? Does it put a, does it create a thumbnail of that, or does it just... Yeah, like it's squat, and that's an icon, but I think that's a 256 icon. Um, there's a JPEG, yeah, and there's a little thumbnail of Niantis there. Okay, so there's at least something there. Okay, yeah. But you do have a. Oh no, I haven't got the file one. I thought we had a. I thought I had a, a, a file one there for a file lookup. I know we've got the font one. Hmm. They've covered. Oh, they've covered a hell of a lot, to be fair. Yes. No, that sounds very powerful. Yes. Yeah. Right. The only other question I've got was on docking panels. 
Would it be possible to run a Capesoft file explorer inside a docking panel? The golden rule of the um, docking panel or, or docking pane, um, mm. the, the golden rule of it is if you can get to the handle, you can dock it. Now, I know that's a bold rule, and chances out will come back and bite me, but uh, that is the, 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 the idea behind it. Let's just try right. this. It might be a little old docking pane. So, and one of the things we do is um, let you be, uh, and uh, coming back to the rule, you know, one pane, one handle. Now, because yes. you, you can switch that handle at runtime, but it's one pane, one handle, then um, you can get a handle of a lot of things. Like, you can get a handle of a window. So, we allow you to start a whole Clarion child procedure and then dock it. So, have it running on another thread and bring it in. With a thread. Okay, yes. Yeah. So let's just bring this, uh, kick this one into life, and I'll show you a couple of things. Although, I think this example, again, it's the old one, it uses IE, and I don't think, because um, you can also grab external applications like the calculator, uh, notepad, and so on and so forth. Right. I don't think it'll do it on my application, though, because I've renamed, I've got text pad running with notepad and I've got uh, maybe the calculator and then I'm using edge so um, it's about time we updated the uh, it's about time we updated the example to be fair okay. can, can the dotting panels be locked in position so that the users can't change them yes. or are yeah. they free to no you can set the minimum the, the trick there is uh, set the min and max to the same so they can't grow and so on Right. Uh, so there's your docking pane. Uh, there's a Clarion list. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's a standard Clarion list. That. So there's a handle to a Clarion list. Clarion button, Clarion drop. It might be a drop combo. I can't remember. Doesn't. But yeah. Um, and another button that so you can just pick them up and do them accordingly. Um, you can play about with some like you can give them. Where is it? Uh, when they float, have them so the actual content is a partially see-through. Not quite sure why right. you want to do that, but you can. Um, that's our thing. So you can see progress bars. We've got a sheet. We've got oh no, that's a button and another button which isn't resized. Uh, basically, um, as content. Then we go to more advanced. So we've got child procedures. So I can, that's just telling you it's going to open two child procedures and put them as different panes. So I have, right. so there's my Clarion browse with an update form and you can layer them. So you can say I want a layer two window to go over the top of the layer one window. Right. Uh, and there's the, uh, another Clarion procedure running. And you've also got on this, um, Again, uh, a standard Clarion control, drop combo or drop list on the window and a button. So on this, you've actually got four panes defined and a child area which you want to be straining, uh, restricting. I'm not sure why I left that light, so. Um, and two of them are, are, are actual uh, procedures running on separate feds uh, with a child okay, update. Got you. And I should imagine I've got somewhere a lookup of her. No, I haven't. No, but if you had a look up, the look up would lay itself over the top if you wanted it to. Okay. So, an external, I better very much doubt this will work. Let's just try it. No, definitely didn't work. I used to have kicked <laughs> in and give me grief. Um, so, that was a bit poor. And the calculator over there. The only thing that actually did come into the proper place was um, text pad. Right, yes. Yeah, there's my, there's my text pad running. Okay, yeah, no, I understand that. Um, no, I think that's everything. You, you've covered it. Cause I, I noticed a couple of uh, examples you've been through and the, the layout of the command bars and things like that seem to be just what I'm looking for. 
So it's basically you can just about hide the fact that that you're using Clarion and everything and look really more as a, a Microsoft type application than a, a Clarion application. It, <laughs> more than that. <laughs> yeah. Even XAML. Oh yeah. Well, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can use a, even a control can... inside a control. Even a. <laughs> A property inside one cell, or a property grid. <laughs> you can do where the icon group, uh, yeah, icon view. So you could use um, an actual report control, but put it in icon mode. So basically, you only show a tiny bit of data, and then you show an icon. And right. I've, I think I've got a file loaded one, which I use with uh, cars. If memory serves, yeah, icon view. So being a bit of a petrol head, um, I thought I'd use cars. <laughs> okay, yes, that's exactly what I was looking for. There are limitations on this icon view. Do I? I, I like that wording. Be, That'd be much better uh, with bottom aligned and so on. So just watch your icon sizes and so on and so forth, yeah. They can only have up to 64 by 64 icon size. Mm. They can't get any bigger than that. That's a limitation. So. 64 by 64. Yeah. Okay. And is, is that 64 deep, regardless of, of width? So if I only had 10 across, I would only be able to have 64 rows of it? It's a pixel no, no, size, no. sorry. 54 icon. pixel by 64 yes. pixel, the actual physical oh, icon. Oh, sorry. I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. You can't get any uh, so, so it's only like icons you can show, not actual oh, they could JPEGs be a, or anything like that. They could be. Um, no, they, yeah, they yeah, could they be, do. but they wouldn't be compiled in. Actually, they're right, not compiled in. I'm going to say they're not compiled in. They're local data. Yeah, what am I on about? Because they're the icon. Yeah, they, it won't do them, Andy. There's a limitation there. Is it? In the icon view, yes. If you want to get any bigger, then you'd have to go to just do XAML. Oh, so you got you. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the actual right. icon, yeah, it will. Although it will resize them, will it not? If you chose uh, a bigger no. image. It, no, it'll only show the 64 by 64. Yeah, but if you're showing a JPEG, will it oh, not? Uh, <laughs> if you put a bigger JPEG, it'll just it'll either truncate it or it'll show it at 60, only the 64 by 64. That's it. Let me just take a look if um, what JPEGs we've got in here. We've got a bitmap. Let's try that one. No, I didn't like it. Oh, mm. maybe you need to put the full path name on it. No, no, because I bet that'll work. Yeah, it will. Let me just try that one. No, no, that was a bigger one. That was the JPEG. Mm -hmm. Right. So you might have to, you might have to cut some thumbnails when you let them wet them when you let them add them. I think I think that's in the classes, Andy. I think you add the icon automatically, it, so it'll actually searching for .jpeg .icon because it's in the classes. If I remember no. right. Uh, I thought this example wouldn't do. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll confirm that for you. That's not a problem. So, yeah. unfortunately, we're getting close to time. In fact, we're, we're over time. And, and uh, my good yeah. lady's already been in once, which means I'm in the doghouse already. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry to have took all your time here. Andy, oh, but, no, problem. Uh, no problem. I enjoy doing these things and, uh, and it's, uh, they are worthwhile. Uh, and our numbers are going up. So uh, it's a good thing. So, no, you'll never get a complaint from me. Um, I'll just um, I'll just get a complaint for Wendy instead. <laughs> so, One last question, Andy. Of course, yeah. Did you get the, to look at the um, uh, at the calendar? The problem I showed you about the the dates. The day end. When you had a recurring, and you had actually it doesn't recur forever, and you had a, it won't paint it. Well, when I you got that, I think uh, I think I, I was going to bed at the time, and I got the email, and it was like no. I don't believe that. So <laughs> now I, I, it's not that I don't dispute, <laughs> but um, I'm sure I use it in uh, on that on that uh, scheduling app there, because some people only come in for so many. Uh, it's it's uh, like care centres, if you will. Some people only come in for so long, uh, and so on. And I use the end date facility, 
So I'd be highly surprised mm -hmm. if it didn't work. It doesn't. It doesn't paint it, unless you edit it. Once you edit it, and it goes in there and paints it, but not up to it. Okay, okay. Uh, repeating it. Too. Yeah, on the remind, on the recurring. Yeah. Recurring, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So let's have that one, and we'll say, and it's uh, Roberto. You're famous yet again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we will. Uh, well, we are going to recur. I'm going to recur daily, but only for three days. Ah, now would you right. say at the end date? Yes, end after or end date. Yeah, put an end date there. Occur every day. Occur at the end date. And do it all. That only did one of them. Yep. Now you say it and I edit it and goes back in. It goes in when you edit it. <laughs> what but the? if you close the calendar, close it, and go back in, it only paints the first day. Unless you edit it, and then it'll paint the rest of the days. Uh, that's, that's what I was that's about. Book. That's a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, no, I haven't. I, I, well, technically, I have looted it. <laughs> but yeah, only now. And go back in. You've saved it, right? Yep, yep, yep. There are three days. And go back in. Okay. And it's only on the first day, see? And if I was to move it and do all. Oh. It doesn't do it unless you edit it. Ah, it's got to be something in the data load of that. That's going to be the, the pattern because you, you, you basically calculate a pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, if you leave it recurring, take, uh, recurring forever, then it works no end date. Like put no end date on it. Oh, well, let me just try that one. Then it works. No. Okay, I shall take a look. Yeah, if it's on a no end date, I mean, if it recurs forever, it works fine. What about if it's a current then? So go for we'll go back to daily and go for three days. Yeah, it's got to be the pattern. Basically, you mm -hmm. specify a pattern and then you specify up to three parameters depending on the pattern chosen. Um, and that will be the, uh, the the end date pattern. Right. So there's a bug somewhere there. Hopefully you can find it and tell us what it is. But you've seen it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'll be the... Um, the, the the pattern. I'm pretty certain of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unfortunately, John, I know you had a question on uh, the docking pay. Um, we're, way, we're way over time on it, but it's fine. Like, it's nothing. It's well, nothing urgent. Or, so. Fire the question away, and I'll give me some food for thought for the next uh, for next week. Oh, basically, I was just looking to load panes faster. Um, especially when using a like an, another Clarion procedure or something that you want to dock, and there's there's a lot of movement when that happens on the screen. So those two, yeah, they they open almost simultaneously, but then again, there's not really much on them. You know, they are nice, simple schedule, yeah, especially that one. <laughs> uh, I do know what you mean yeah. why the lazy open was uh, came about. So what's the scenario you're trying to do? Uh, you want to. Well, we're, we're doing a little different too. We're adding docking panes on the fly too. So we're adding a docking pane, and then it's it's um, starting up a procedure, and then docking the procedure inside of the pane. It was just created, so there's quite a few things going on, I guess. But I I narrowed it down in the dock. The creation of the pane is really fast. Yes, it's the loading and all the other, the things it has to do to get itself going, I guess. So, but that's all. It's not a big deal at the moment because I I hit it so that you don't see any of the flashing Just loading of the uh, but is there anything you know from the loading could that be sped up at all I I don't know I, I was wondering that's not if... really a, a, a fix anyway and it's not really a, a true fix you see it's catch 22 no. you 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 want the handle so you have to wait for the window to uh, be open so you can get you know for, for, for the Fed to be started and the window to be open so you can get it 
and I think if, if you're using the, 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 the internal class and so on in the, in the template, then that will notify back to the main holder that it's now available to be docked. We could look at that. That would be a starting topic for next week where we have a look at um, user debug view. In fact, I, I, I've gone full circle doing the command bar stuff today. I couldn't have, you know, without ultimate debug, um, I'd have been uh, stuck. So uh, we've gone full circle. So, yeah, why don't we put some of that in into the class next week and have a look if there's any of the, the speeding up we can do at that point to, to basically notify it faster. Okay. Yeah, sounds Not good. Like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay, well, um, if there's uh, no other questions, um, I think we'll... Uh, we'll we'll uh, call it a day if everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. I'm, I'm happy. very happy. Thanks very much for answering all my questions. No problem whatsoever. No problem. Right, uh, we'll call time. Now uh, I'll I'll go and face the wrath of Wendy. <laughs> right. Good luck. See you all, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.